Bring me to HB 1705 FNA. Allowing the purchase and use of marijuana by adult. Regulating the purchase and use of marijuana. Imposing taxes on the wholesale and retail sale of marijuana. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, I know that you have a long list of people to hear from today, so I hope hopefully I'll be very quick. Um, I would like to say that this is a simple question and there are simple answers. The fact is that we have a lot of people from law enforcement who are going to sit here and tell you why it's a bad thing. Uh, and I remember uh, that um, when we had prohibition, we had law enforcement officials who were going out and ready to enforce prohibition laws. This particular bill, uh, and when, when they actually looked at that, when we actually changed it um, and removed prohibition, all of a sudden the law enforcement officials have moved over to regulation. They've done a good job. We have a department in the state that goes out and instead of fighting a war on alcohol possession, regulates it. And you know we have police officers now who make sure bars are in compliance. We have our own state liquor stores. Okay, time changes. Laws and public perception change. I was stunned the first time that I read an article in the Wall Street Journal that said public opinion is over 70% in favor of getting rid of the prohibitions on of marijuana in this country. When you ask people on the street in a live poll what the numbers are, the numbers are actually lower than when you actually let them walk into a ballot box and make the decision. If we were to put this to the people, we wouldn't be having this conversation because the statistics are people who are coming out to vote are more in favor of it than they're willing to answer in a survey because people, you know, it's one of those really contentious issues. This is a bill that attempts to go out and solve some of the problems. I was going to tell you about all of the constitutional reasons why you should support it. That's already been covered. I'd like to tell you why um, it would both increase revenue from a licensing and sales perspective and reduce our cost for criminal, in criminal justice enforcement and incarceration. You know, that's already pretty clear. What we have is a solution to um, find a balance in the law. Now, the, the outstanding question is what are we going to do with the federal government? And if they weren't sending mixed messages, you know, maybe I would have a different position. But right now, if you are in a VA hospital in a state that has medical marijuana provisions, the federal government says, you know, you can actually have medical marijuana in a VA hospital. I mean, where are we on this? If you look at the history of how we got a marijuana prohibition in the first place, it was because large chemical companies didn't want um, agricultural hemp and other things impacting their business after, um, you know, in the wars and the, uh, the oils and other products that were available. This was an attempt to actually go and suppress business and commerce, and it's turned into something completely different. We need to focus on their, <coughs> our ready customers, ready market, and those customers are being turned into criminals, even though the public will is to the contrary. If the public will was, most people don't want this, I would have a different position. But my constituents have told me I need to be up here and support this because we need to fix the problem. If New Hampshire has an opportunity to demonstrate that the Live for Your Guys state is willing to get out in front and solve these problems and do what our constituents have said they want us to do. This is a great opportunity to pass this out of committee and let's send it, let's send it to the House floor for a vote. Thank you very much.